Hello everyone, and in this video we're going to install the Fruto Technology 5 LEDs for the cyclotron lid. Now if you don't know, the existing cyclotron only has 3 LEDs in it. And with the addition of 2 LED rings here, it emulates a cyclotron spinning inside a little bit better than the existing just 3 LEDs. Michael did a great job animating the lights for the existing 3 LEDs to make it already look like a ring that's spinning inside, especially when it's ramping up and you add that with this, man, that's just cheating. Now, for those of you who are fans of the Ghostbusters, the video game, you know, those of you who refuse to accept that it's not canon to the movies, you know who you are. Then this one is for you because it can change colors when you switch to the Ghostbusters, the video game modes on, on the neutrino one. Now for this video, we're just gonna need to work on the Cyclotron lid. The lid here is connected by two pieces here. There's an inner piece, and you got the outer piece and they are glued in on along six pegs uh, i tried to put some tape here as you can see to mark where roughly where they are so there's six so the only way to pry this open is going to break that glue bond you're going to want to take a flat head screwdriver the one i have not good it's not flat enough so i'm going to try it with this uh, scraper i have so this one yeah, the scraper is pretty good. It's thin enough that I can get in between the crack there. And be please be careful. It's really tight, and I don't want you guys to scratch yourself like I have. Oh, that's one. So you're going to hear a big, huge pop. And you were wondering, yes, a magical band-aid did appear. That's... I cut myself on this scraper, but as you know, it's just part of the job as being a Ghostbuster. Okay, moving on to the next one. I wish I had a better flathead. This one doesn't go deep enough. The, the pegs are like right here on the inside part. And as you see, my flathead doesn't get deep enough. And I'm worried about damaging it. Let's try a butter knife. There we go. I I know the, how it looks and how it sounds. It is scary. It sounds scary. It sounds like I just snapped the whole thing. But uh, re rest assured that it is not breaking the whole thing. It is just breaking that peg. So as you notice, I got into a butter knife and I pulled up towards me until it snapped. If you're scared when you're doing this, just remember the lights. That will all be worth it. a tough one I mean look at how much that bends that is scary to see but I'm just gonna go all the way and show you that it will work, do not be afraid. So look, you can see the shadow is bending so much. I'm gonna do it. There you go. Pop. And last one. That's it. And it comes right off. So as you can see, this is where we snapped them all off those pegs right there. So don't be afraid. I hope this video shows you that it bends like crazy. It looks scary as heck. Yeah, you're gonna lose a little bit of plastic when you're scraping along the edge. That's why I put tape to show you where it is so you don't have to go all the way around and grind it out. But uh, this damage is very minor. It does You can't even tell once you put it back together. All right, we're in business. Okay. So there are different versions that some of you might have. I'm assuming that a lot of you probably have the no solder version, which will come with some sort of terminal connectors at the end here. Fortunately, I don't have those, so I can't do a direct step-by-step -step instructions of those. But I'm hoping that by using this solder version, you will pick up uh, on your own how to connect these. So next, we're going to have to remove these diffusers. So there's a little tab in here. Get in with a small flathead like mine, maybe. 
and just pry it up so gently and it'll pop off. Watch your eyes. Next, before we take these LEDs out, very important step that I totally didn't forget and had to go back and do it again, is to mark some registration lines of where the LEDs line up. So you're gonna have to kind of eyeball it and trace it. So this goes around here. That goes around there. If you guys have any other better methods of doing this more accurately, please do post in the comments and share the wealth of knowledge. But that's all we're going with right now. Now to remove the LEDs, there are three pegs here and this little piece of plastic at the top. You can just easily scrape those off. Okay, once you scraped off enough, you can just pry it up. All right, so let's just finish the rest. Okay, all done. Okay, next, before we go ahead and solder these on, for those of you who have the non-solder version, I believe at the end here, these three wires will be attached to some terminal connectors. And I believe what you're gonna wanna do is take the four wires that come from the PCB here on the, on the lid, and you're gonna probably have to snip those off and I don't know if you have to strip them or not, but if someone could fi figure that out, let me know. But all you gotta do is pop the black and brown one. Those are two ground wires. And that will line up with the green one. Then you take the yellow one, which is the data, and it matches up with the white one. And then the power one, which is red, the VCC matches up the red one. Screw those in together. And then I believe for those terminal blocks, you can just drop them in there. So it'll come along here. It'll be connected like this. And then those terminal blocks, you can just fit all in there and you put the LED on top. If you have the solder version like me, we're gonna desolder these wires first. And then you're gonna need to take a short wire like this, and we're gonna need to attach the two ground connections here. And then the green one will go to the ground connection that's in the middle on the right side of the short cable. And the white one goes to the middle one, the DI connection. And last, the red one goes to VCC. And as a tip, make sure you're soldering it to the small solder connection and not the big ones on the side. Next, before we put this back together, we're gonna do a quick test. So go ahead and pop that lid back onto your proton pack and then give it a test. So right now, this one's not lighting up and it's not 
perfectly accurate and that's because it's still set to uh, 12 LEDs so you're gonna need to power down your pack and then take your wand and we're gonna need to go into the settings menu for this one you hold down intensify and flip this top switch five times okay and then we're gonna dial it down to number four and we're gonna press intensify. 40 cyclotron LEDs. And wait until you get to 20. 20 cyclotron LEDs. So 20 cyclotron LEDs is what we want. Go back up to the top. Saving settings. Save settings and try it again. Dang it. And now they should all be lighting up and it should be proper. Change modes. Green, blue, yellow. Yeah, it works. So let's, let's close this back up. Another fun thing you could do right now while you're at it, if you plan to replace this inner fake ribbon cable with a real one, now's the time to go ahead and pop that off. And now another thing I forgot to mention earlier is that some of you might have purchased the version that comes with the N-Filter um, LED light here. It's called a NeoPixel Jewel. The one I have here was soldered on by myself. This is a NeoPixel Jewel that I bought, not from Fruto, I bought on my, on my own. So if you're soldering your own, the wire is kind of the same thing. You basically want to go green to ground, red to whatever power, VDD, VCC, and then the yellow goes to the data in. Now to install the lights, you're gonna need to glue these down onto the three pegs inside. I'm gonna use super glue. Um, you, if you have hot glue, you can try hot glue. If you have some other glue, you can give that a shot, but I think super glue is uh, the best method. It dries real quick and you can still pry it off afterwards if you need to. And before we do that though, you just want to do a quick test run to kind of map everything out. So for the first LED that comes out from the PCB here, we're obviously going to tape this down here. So actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do that first. When taping down wires, it's always best to keep them as flat as you can. And when popping in the LEDs, you're going to want to take advantage of these little grooves. And that's where the wires will go into. And for any excess wire you can drop it into the little pit in there so this one's gonna come along around here that looks good and then for the one going out I'm gonna put into this little groove right there and that should go straight across nice and tight tape down in the middle here and the second one will drop into this other groove like that and then another important tip for these wires that come out, make sure they're nice and tight and flat. Um, if you look at your lid, you can kind of see, if you take a look at your stock lid right now, you, if you look closely at the edges, you can kind of see the stock wires along the sides of the LEDs here. So you want to make these as flat as possible so that they're not as visible. So that goes in there. This will come across. The excess goes in and that will go somewhere like that and finally the last one something like this and then for the neopixel we'll get that to that later on so let's go ahead and start gluing these down if you're using super glue all you need is just a tiny dab don't overdo it and of course make sure that the LEDs line up with the registration marks that you put on earlier so you just want to hold it still nice and tight until it bonds okay now we're going to put on the diffuser and as you see there's going to be the diffuser has these little notches and in the middle if you can see uh, just next to the wires here there's a little notch right here where my screwdriver is so there's gonna be one on this side and one on the opposite side and that's where you line these up. So you pop in one side and then just use a screwdriver to kind of 
push with force on the other side and it'll pop right in like that. So to keep things organized, I, I like to use a lot of tape on this. Look for the little notches. When you're putting the diffusers back on, to get the other side down, it does just take force. You just gotta have to push down on those tabs and as hard as you can and it will snap in. Okay, now that those are done, we're gonna move on to the N-Filter LED. Um, for this one, you route it around to the side like this. Um, mine's a little too short because like I said, I did this myself and um, I want a different route, but imagine it's a little bit longer. Um, when you go down to the side like this, it will come out of here. Also another tip when your N-Filter comes off, you can place this back on by over top and then you see here, there's a little, little ledge here. You're gonna wanna push up on the cyclotron lens here a little bit until it gets underneath, and then everything should be back in place. And so speaking of that end filter, it's gonna come out along here and then through here. So let me flip over. It'll come out like that. And then out here and then into the back here. So the wires are not are just barely exposed if you go that route. Personally, when I've been trying this out, um, I've noticed that it was a little bit tight on the side. You do feel that it's um, a snug fit once you put it all back together because of the wires being um, exposed on the side here. And then depending how well you place these wires, some of these pegs might pinch the wires a little bit. So you can give it a try. So another route that I looked into was going just over top like this. And then it will come out through this notch here, like that. And on the other lid, that would be coming out from around here, up and over. So there'll be, the wires will be exposed a little bit more if you go this route. But I do find that um, the fit's a little bit better. Yes, there's a little bit more wires on top, but at least on the outside, there's not as much pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and tape that down and show you guys. Okay, so I've taped it down as flat as I can. And let me show you how this looks. Okay, so I see when I'm placing the lid back on, flip it over, it'll come out through there. And then this LED will just go in and it'll be hot glued or glued down right here. Um, so I personally prefer this method because um, the sides don't feel as tight. And before we secure everything, if you haven't tested out the end filter jewel yet, go ahead and take this lid off again and connect it to your proton pack. Then run the overheat sequence and make sure that this is flashing. Once you get to go, you can go ahead and glue this back on. So there are, there are several ways as well to secure these two back together. Dustin suggested one way is where these pegs are, you can drill a hole through the here and then just connect them with some screws. Another way is just to put some glue on and re-glue it back together. Okay, so I glued it down with some super glue and it holds up pretty well. So I just um, I just put the glue on the six pegs and I just held it down like this, pushing on the edges until it bonded. And yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's not coming apart. Um, it's strong enough that it holds it together, but not too strong that you can't just rip it apart if you ever need to get back in there. 
And don't forget the two screws. Okay, so that is hot glued in. Now let's go test this out. You can also test out the manual bench. Alright, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.